Hi everyone, I'm Lucas Kwiatkowski, full-time PPC manager if it's your first time here. And I'm going to go through another advanced strategy that I've been using and, and testing for a few months now that I want to walk through with you guys. It's using Helium 10, I think probably one of the most common tools. And I also just want to say that the past couple months, and especially going into summer, a lot of people see a drop-off in conversion and they freak out about it. But it's it, that's just what happens in summer. A lot of people are struggling with sales right now. So more ad spend is not always the answer. When a lot of people see a drop in sales, they try to spend more and make up for that. And that hurts them even more because the ads aren't going to convert. So you got to be patient. You got to understand this is one of the slowest times of the year. And just you know, rely on your organic sales. Keep pushing your SEO and maybe run some promos and stuff like that. But if your, if your ACOS just all of a sudden keeps spiking month after month, it can definitely be due to seasonality right now. On that topic, I'm going to talk about a very seasonal product right now, sunscreen, that is definitely seeing a big spike right now. And I'm going to go through, a again, this strategy I've been using, and it's, it's kind of following this, this routine that I've been talking about is targeting your high volume keywords knowing what keywords that you want to go after and making sure you're putting all your ad spend into them so i chose a kind of a random sunscreen here it looks like it is shipped from and sold by amazon um and actually one more thing i wanted to call out here that was interesting is i typed in sunscreen and you'll see here there's another new kind of feature here that said customers also shop for and they're giving you the best or Amazon's choice by keyword. So these are obviously some very, very high volume keywords because that's why they chose them. Sunscreen face, sunscreen Neutrogena, sunscreen 30. Looks like a new thing they're testing to kind of do more like a, you know, like an autocomplete here instead of sunscreen face. So that one's, that one's up there. So Again, if you're a seller, always see what your high volume keywords look like on the front end. See what your competition is. See what coupons people are running. See what Amazon's doing. It always helps to type in your keywords and see what customers are looking at. All right. So where was the one I chose? It was this Hawaiian Tropic one. And the idea of this is to do reverse ASINs on your own products okay so I chose this product here not great SEO but I chose it for a reason because you'll see here they have the first bullet point reef safe all in caps I'm guessing they just added that in because reef safe sunscreen is a high volume keyword that's kind of it's new it's reef and coral safe it's their natural sunscreen formulas that don't hurt the reefs all right so what I would do is I would come to Helium 10, type in your own ASIN. Reverse ASIN searches aren't just for your competitors. They're for your own products as well. Okay, so I typed in this product. You'll see here, it gives you the organic rank. All right, so it's ranking on number one for a lot of keywords. Okay, what I would do here is there's kind of two ways to sort this, but for the argument of this, sort this by search volume. Okay. So what we're looking for here are keywords that we're doing okay for organically, but there's some room to improve, all right? So like this organic rank, 235 on Neutrogena sunscreen. We're probably not going to do too well on that for PPC. It's another branded term. We rank 235. That's got to be what? Page 5, page 6, something like that. So you scroll down here, and what I'm looking for are organic ranks somewhere like 15 to 30 because that's going to be middle of page one to page two so you can see right here that reef safe sunscreen they are ranked 15th organically okay so then what i would do is kind of take a list of all of these keywords like so reef safe sunscreen waterproof they are five organically Necessarily, this this is a very common question I get. People say, "Well, if I'm if I'm ranked in the top five, do I want to advertise for it?" That is a very situational uh, thing that's going to happen. So that really depends on what your goals are, what your competition's doing. 
that's that's harder to, to do. But these organic ranks, so Reef Safe Sunscreen, Suntan Lotion, they're 17. That one definitely has some room to grow. Sunscreen SPF 50, the organic rank 7. So maybe you, you try that one, maybe you don't. What I would do after this is after I get maybe a list of 10 to 20 keywords. Again, with all of these strategies, never, never go too crazy with the keywords. You want to find the targeted ones. That's why I go by search volume here. Reef Safe Sunscreen gets a lot of search volume and they're 15th organically. If they move up to, to five there, that's really, really going to help them. So after I get that list of keywords that I'm ranked middle page one to page two, I would come over to the keyword tracker. Now you'll see I have some things running here that I'm gonna kind of hide for now, but if you put in these keywords, you'll see what it what it shows. So I have 10 keywords here. These are some of them are low, some of them are the ones that I'm targeting, but this is why I love this tool because it shows you the sponsored rank and the organic rank. All right? So for these ones, I just set these up not too long ago. Sponsored rank is 1. That is where you want to be when you're targeting these because if your sponsored rank is 20, you, the, the data is not going to be reliable. Your sponsored rank needs to be one or two, and that gives you the most reliable data. You're at the top of the page, and you're seeing what people are clicking on, what the conversion rate is for that top ad. And then what you start to do over time is compare the sponsored rank to the organic rank. So if the sponsored rank stays here, what is going to happen to the organic rank? Okay, It shows you how you move over time, and then you can kind of track it. Now, if your sponsored rank stays here at one, and you keep checking this campaign and it's not converting, don't, don't stay with the keyword if it's not working. If you put hundreds and hundreds of dollars into a keyword and it's not converting, it's not the keyword for you because if it doesn't convert here, it's going to hurt you organically because your conversion rate is dropping on the ad. Okay, so drop it down. Go in, in that case, go for more long tail keywords and do that. Okay, so once you find these keywords that you want to put in here that you want to track, what I would do is set up a very targeted campaign. So you'll see here, I'm trying to show you this real time data and kind of do this as I've been testing on other accounts. I'm moving it into new accounts. This is, this data is about three days old. And you'll see here, I have exact ad group, one keyword. Phrase ad group, one keyword. The default bid is 75 cents, okay? But we are paying cost per click 108, cost per click 111. Because what you want to do in these campaigns, is, as I told you, the most reliable data is at the top of the page. So this keyword bid doesn't matter as much because a lot of my advanced stuff right now is just using these placement stats. Placement stats are really fun to work with and they give you so much control. So we come into this, all right, and then we look at the placement stats. I have the placement stats set to 100. All but one click from this campaign have been at the very top of the page, okay? This is what we're shooting for. So cost per click, yeah, it's 112 and we've got two orders from 17 clicks. Not terrible. That's kind of middle of the road for conversion rates that you want to do at. It's only been running for a few days. So I'm not quite sure. I set a very low budget for this. I think I only set a $10 daily budget because I wasn't sure how expensive these clicks were going to be. You know, they could be $150, which is on the high side for this product. So I set it to a low budget. I set a $100 bid uh, top of page placement, and then I just set a lower keyword bid. This is giving me the most reliable data, and I'm doing this for all of those keywords that I chose in their separate campaigns. Okay? So, if you already have your very successful keywords running in campaigns, keep them running in those. It's, it's still a common misconception that people stop and start campaigns a lot. It's not something you want to do. If you have a keyword that's working, just tweak it in the campaign it's already in. All right, it's going to be a lot better for you. You're probably going to see better results there. But if you want to do this, again, I'm setting these up with one keyword each. 
trying testing some different ad groups, using bid adjustments very aggressively, and then setting low budgets.